Come get me. Come get me. Ow! 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 All right, friends, we are back at this again. Do you remember the video that I posted last Wednesday about moving these macaws? Well, I took these feeder baskets out of the cages. I use stainless steel bowls that I get very cheaply from the Dollar Tree store. A dollar a piece, they're about eight inches wide and about three inches deep. I build these baskets so that each compartment is nine inches by nine inches and four inches high. Um, and I put three in here. That way I can have a bowl of pellets, a bowl of seed mix, and a bowl of fruits and chopped vegetables. I took these feeders off of the side of the cage. If you look closely, it's right about there. You can see where the feeder came off of this cage. I can no longer access that area because, well, as you can see, there's only a, about a foot distance in between the cages. And so I'm moving the feeder to the end of the cage and I've cut out a hole down here at the bottom of the cage on this front end. And it's four inches by 27 inches. Cause that's how big the feeder basket is. These are the bowls that we use. Like I said, three per cage. One for, one for pellets, one for seed. And honestly, you know, true, true disclosure, right now one of them's going to be for water because I don't have automatic watering hooked up. Uh, I can put their fruit on top of their seed and that'll work out just fine for now. I will eventually hook up automatic watering and so we'll be able to have three food bowls in for each pair of birds. There is a door, you can see this little clip, this is going to get changed, but there is a door cut on the front on one side. And that leaves a space that's about two and a half feet across and then almost four feet down. I can put a nest box in. I'm not quite sure, not quite convinced of the style of nest box. Most people use horizontal nest boxes for macaws. Um, there is room to hang one up there, one of the, the 30 inch nest boxes that um, are made from metal that you can get commercially or I may try to build something uh, vertically for them in the wild. A lot of macaws will nest in dead palm trunks, you know, that are like less than 16 inches in diameter. And so that may work out very well. I know that a lot of people do that, but I have three cages here in the front. And then if I pan over, I have the two cages in the back that are, um, well, they're put long ways in this building because I don't want any sticking out the back. I got my helpers here with me. There's Catherine and Jeremiah. I got Grumpy Cat and Buster Dog. And, you know, I've got Uncle Charles, the big boy Muscovy, and Mama Duck, and the five babies. They're all here. All the macaws. And I even have the little baby cockatoo. Now, she's not a baby. She is full grown. She is one of the smallest species of cockatoo. This is a lesser sulfur crested cockatoo, and there's her mate up in the back. They have chewed all their branches. I have a stack of limbs that we have pruned from trees. Um, they're sweet gum limbs, and those are going to be used as perches for the birds. And so just as soon as I get this cedar basket set up, I'm going to put more perches in for all these guys. And they're going to have a grand old time. If you see in the background, the next cage over is Vosses, then the cage after that is Vosses, then there's two pair of blue fronts, and then there's Conyers and Ringnecks and Alexandrians and Quakers going down the line. So there's your little aviary tour for the day. But aren't these little cockatoos cute? So here I have the feeder basket installed, and that lets you see the three different... Uh, compartments more easily and you can see that the food bowl is just going to slide in there but I have to attach it it's still not still not attached so I'm going to use these stainless steel hog rings these are 
Uh, I think they're listed as half inch or three quarter inch. I'm not sure. But I have this giant hog ring pliers. Y'all y'all don't get excited. That was just my knee. And yes, there's mud on the ground. I'm going to cover all this with bark mulch. Um, just as soon as it quits raining. We are in between rainstorms here. I'm filming this, uh, what is it, Thursday the 21st. Don't you love YouTube time travel? But I got to get this done. Uh, you can't see him, but Jeremiah's out there gathering up the branches for perches now. Look at that pretty face. All right, friends, we are just about done. I have the flap installed here. Um, as you can see, I've pieced together two pieces of this wire. This is a one inch by three inch 10 gauge wire. This is a one inch by one inch 12 gauge wire. Both of these are very heavy and very, very expensive to buy. So I don't waste any of it. And anytime I can reuse a piece or use pieces of what otherwise would be scrap, then that's what I'm going to do. Uh, just use plenty of these big hog rings up here. And that acts as the hinge. And that allows us to take the bowls in and out. Don't want to get my finger nipped by one of the scarlets. But um, you can see I've left it long at the bottom. Right now I'm going to put a latch on here. Uh, just one of these dog leash kind of latches, clips. Uh, what I have done in the past is to hinge them along the bottom so that they swing upwards. And then I'd put just a regular cage latch up high to hold it shut. I can show you that on a different cage. So here we got a Vasa parrot and you can see how I have have it hinged at the bottom. Hey pretty girl. Hey pretty girl. Hey, pretty, pretty. But what I have decided to experiment with on this is I have seen where Tony Silva on Instagram, his son Darian, had posted where they, they were building some cages. And they had it hinged at the top like this and left long at the bottom. And they had a piece of one inch by one inch, maybe two by two, I'm not sure. A uh, square tubular steel uh, bolted to this and it acted as a counterweight and he's, he says the birds are not able to push it open maybe uh, maybe he's only talking about you know smaller conures or maybe Amazon sized birds not big macaws I'm not sure but I thought I would leave this long so that I could eventually do that i don't have any with me here on the farm right now um maybe i can get some in the future and try and make an update video on that but he says you don't have to latch it at all that it's just counterweighted and the birds are not able to push it open or not able to push the bows out therefore not able to to escape to come out uh he says that it saves a whole lot of time i'm not sure that it's going to save a whole lot of time with just five cages but if it works for these then maybe in the future i might switch over and do all my cages that way um i only have about 75 cages of birds to feed every day but you know any time saving that i 
can come up with, that was an acorn hitting the roof. Any, any, any time that I can say from, you know, meaningless chores like that, many, whatever word that is I'm looking for, from, you know, mundane chores, that's time that I can spend, you know, either with my children or doing something else with the birds, whatever needs to be done. And so that's, that's something, you know, worth considering. Here's that funny little cockatoo again. Well, I got some perches in the cage. It's not a great big log like that. I will cut one and put in there horizontally up uh, high for them. Uh, but that will suffice for now. You can see they got the, the feed bowl in correctly. Um, this cage is still a little bit crooked, wonky. I'm going to cut another log to put in there for them also. But this is going to work now. I'm going to put some toys in. So that will be for a different video in the future. You can see I gave some perches to the little cockatoos. They are like termites. They go through. Those perches will last about a week before I have to pull them out and replace them. This is why I always keep um, PVC perches in the backs of the cages, you see. That, uh, Eliminates the need of climbing into the cage or cutting holes in the backside when I don't really need to. Uh, they always have a perch. It's a PVC pipe that has been textured and it works really well. Look at how beautiful those birds are, especially out there in the natural sunlight. Makes me so happy. And let's not forget these two way up high. This is the military macaws. They are, well, they're something else, aren't they? Look at them. They're going to come and get me. Any moment now. This is a Catalina macaw. Catalina in Spanish is Catherine. Her name is Rainbow. Catalina macaw is a cross between a scarlet macaw and a blue and gold. She wants to eat me. Isn't she funny? <laughs> Get me. Come get me. Ow! 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 <laughs> Which one's your favorite? The silly board. Oh, I thought you were going to say the Catalina. This moose. Moose? Well, he's inside. <laughs> this is a silly board, though. Hey Dad, look what I found. It's an egg. I want some chicken lay. It sounds butt juices on it. What did you say? <laughs> butt juices. Well, I can't keep this in the video, you, you gross little girl. Why?